The Superconscious Success Mission keeps rolling along with this installment of the Your Spiritual Shift podcast. Hi there, I'm your co-host, Carl Gruber, and along with my super co-host, Jennifer Matthews, we take you virtually around the world and sometimes out of this world to meet and speak with some of the world's greatest spiritual and metaphysical teachers, authors, and experts, and yes, even some ascended master teachers and enlightened beings. You'll find it all right here on this show. Now, let me fly in from Australia, my co-host, Jennifer Matthews, to introduce today's guest. Oh, thanks so much for that, Carl. You know what? Carl is right. We have featured some incredible light and love-filled guests, and that continues with today's show as we meet and talk with David Strickle. David came from a poor, dysfunctional family, yet at a young age invented or so he thought, the law of attraction. Through a year-long spiritual awakening process, David became the verbal channel for a group of Ascended Master teachers called The Stream. Now, he not only brings their light and wisdom to the world by his workshops, his podcast, and his teachings, he's now the author of the book, The Stream, Eternal Wisdom for a Better Life. Hey, David, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Oh, thank you so much for being here. We've been really looking forward to having you on and sharing your story and seeing where it takes us. Um, so before we do that, can you please go into your story and how you kind of came to be doing what you're doing right now? Certainly. Well, the, the what I refer to as a stream is is really source. I keep it really simple. I channel source. I believe everybody is channeling a version of source mm -hmm. uh, in their own unique way. And I have had what I now call the stream. I, I've been very aware of it my whole life uh, because I did have a, a rather dysfunctional childhood. My parents were very disconnected from my life. My father left when I was six. My mother sort of gave up on parenting at that point. And I was really left my own devices. And in, in that happening, I had nowhere else to turn but inward to to survive mm -hmm. that inward knowing culminated in in me believing by the age of 14 even though i was living in a very uh, impoverished household i understood the law of attraction i actually thought it was something i invented <laughs> <laughs> that's cool i didn't know what it was called i didn't know it had a name but i, I thought hey i created this cool thing when i think <laughs> of things and believe them they show up that is awesome. And no one else seems to understand this, but I get it. So this is my thing. I invented it. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, I uh, realized uh, by my late teens, early 20s, that other people were sort of aware of it. There were a couple of books out at that time. This was, you know, back in the early 80s, um, that, that it was a thing that other people knew about. And it was really fascinating to me. And I, I studied it a little bit, but I really always went inward with it. Because mm -hmm. every time I read a book, it's like, okay, there's a piece here that really helps me, but there's so much more. Yeah. And I had that experience all the way through my 20s and my 30s uh, until uh, I, I read the book, The Secret. And of course, that really sort of blew the lid off of that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the whole law of attraction movement. And, and <clears throat> the interesting thing for me is by that time, I had already manifested materially just about anything that a, a, an average person would want to manifest to live a wealthy life. Wow. Beautiful home, nice cars, you know, great vacations, not yachts and things like that, but certainly several steps up from where I came from. Mm -hmm. And this was without a formal education. I was never a good student. I was always in. So my, uh, my, in, my all of that turning inward, uh, I was very daydreamy in school. I didn't get past the 10th grade. So I took a GED, I, I got I passed the GED, got out of school, uh, started working for myself. And then I got into the corporate world and did very well in the corporate world. And I look back now through my whole path and realize I was always successful when I operated in what you might refer to as 5D. Yeah. When, I, when I didn't follow the rules and I didn't follow the template and I didn't follow the path that was laid out for me, I was always very, very successful. Mm -hmm. So... Flash forward to 2010, uh, I had been seeing psychics and trying to figure out, you know, why do I have this knowing that other people don't seem to have? And I had someone tell me that I was a channel. I'd never heard of that. Mm -hmm. This wonderful psychic. And she was right about everything. 
She she spoke to people by name that had passed on that uh, I was close to that she had no way of knowing. So she really confirmed uh, her authenticity to me. And then she went into this whole channeling thing. Well, I thought it was weird and I didn't want to be part of it. I'm like, no, I don't want to be all those weird people. I had really moved myself into this sort of corporate persona and I was doing well there. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to you know, be the guy with the ponytail behind the beads reading the crystal ball. You know, that's kind <laughs> of how I stereotype. And so I really sort of just kept all of that hidden in my life for quite some time. But in 2010, I started meditating. And in my one of my first meditation sessions, I had what is referred to as a kundalini awakening, yeah. where this energy erupted at the base of my spine and just electrified me. And that has never gone away. That electrification, wow. I just feel it all over. And I feel these zaps and zings and sometimes they're so strong, I, I jerk. Yeah. So I, I came to understand what channeling was. Discovering Abraham Hicks helped me, helped me make sense of channeling and helped me uh, release my judgment around it. Mm -hmm. So I, I really got into that for a little while. And then I realized that there was another message coming through that I wasn't hearing anywhere else. And I needed to shut all the other stuff down Yep. because I didn't want to copy anybody. I didn't want to take Abraham and rebrand it as the stream. You know, I certainly got accused of that early on. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to do that. So I shut all of that stuff down and I started my podcast in 2017, the stream of David. And that's where I started channeling for the first time verbally. I, I, I channeled into my uh, recording device and stuff like that prior to that. But as far as doing it for an audience, that's the first time I ever channeled for somebody else was on the podcast. I just, I just recorded it and I put it out there. Uh, it was really choppy and forced <laughs> and, and very uncomfortable. As it often uh, needs it, it to stop. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you can go back. And the cool thing is, is that now we have an archive. So you can go back to 2017 and hear my very first channel message and then go all the way up to today and see how it's evolved. And in that evolution, I started teaching people what they taught me throughout my lifetime. And that's wow. where the Taya practice came from. It's the practical application of their teachings. Wow. What? Oh, you go first. Uh, I'm curious about when you started meditating, that's when this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stream started to come through. Had you had any experiences prior to that that hinted that you might... Uh, uh, be a channel oh yeah yeah a lot of I just used to call it my knowing mm -hmm. things would drop in and I can go all the way back and I was I I was probably around five or six years old I wasn't any older than six because my first recollection my father was still present and he left when I was six so I remember somebody uh one of my parents friends we lived in south Texas one of my parents friends came by and she had this brand new car it was a really fancy car fancier than anything I'd ever seen at that time. And I was really young. And I remember looking at it and really being mesmerized by it. I'm still a car person to this day. <laughs> I think it was about experience. I mean, it was just shiny and had all these buttons and it was just the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And when she drove away, I remember my parents saying kind of negative things about her. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, she doesn't deserve that or will never, and it was all that we'll never have that. Yeah. Why her and not us type of talk. And I remember as a little kid thinking, you can have that. You can have anything that you want. Why don't you believe that you can have that? Well, that and is, I, I find that incredible because normally at that age, especially if you've come from a dysfunctional household where, you know, both parents are not particularly present, um, then a lot of times you find that the kids don't really know how to introspect. And yet at the age of six, you were able to actually, obviously source was always downloading through you and yes. knew what, knew what your end, your end <clears throat> results going to be, obviously, because source does, if we allow ourselves to disconnect from our ego, disconnect from that, that side of us, then we can hear the messages that source is trying to tell us. And, but at six years old, that's quite remarkable. Yeah, so somehow I just went yeah. inward and I really, and I, and I never felt like a child. Yeah. I remember okay. uh, there was this show in the United States. I don't know if you had it in Australia, but it's called Mr. Rogers neighborhood. That was when I was a little kid, okay. also a lot younger <laughs> <laughs> than I am. So, uh, but Carl might remember Mr. Rogers neighborhood, but it started the year I was born mm -hmm. and uh, I, it was a children's show. And I remember watching it as a child thinking this is silly, but he's a nice 
man with a kind heart with good intentions. I remember thinking that as a kid. Like, it's silly, but I'm not really going to make fun of it because he's a good guy. You say, I, don't, like I don't need to watch it, but it's good that he's doing that for the kids. And I'm like, you know, seven years old thinking this stuff. And so you're, you're probably sounding like, if you look at it, you're probably kind of like an old soul. So mm -hmm. you've kind of come into this lifetime and you've already got a lot of knowledge and you've already got a lot of information through you that is translating into this lifetime, which is quite quite amazing at, at the age of six. So that's quite an experience. And so I know that there, there comes time, as you said, where you didn't, you were resisting the whole, the whole spirituality, the whole, um, uh, so what was it that really made you go, I've just got to, I've just got to give into this because this is part of my calling. Yes, but I, a lot of that that introspection that had that that allowed me to survive my childhood, I turned the volume down on that yeah. in adult. I wanted to be mainstream. My ego sort of stepped up and said, mm -hmm. "No, no, no. We're going to be mainstream. We're going to look a certain way and act a certain way and drive a certain kind of car and live in a certain kind of house and have a title and have all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Have all that stuff that, you know, the matrix tells us that we're supposed to want." And, I, and I'm glad that that happened to me because it gave me all of this material uh, as a platform to, to move through. My, my, the decade of my 30s was a horrible decade. And the best thing that could have possibly happened to me, because then that led me into a massive transition in my 40s. And it took my entire 40s to unravel all of that ego stuff. Yeah. Really into my early 50s. You know, really, I'm just in the past couple of years really getting out of all that and and having that that entire ego driven human experience alongside all this inner knowing mm. was a really interesting way to experience life and so now i have all of this um traction if you will you know all all of these experiences that i can draw upon when i use the streams teachings and apply it as a human being and help other people apply their teachings as well I have been there. I've had those experiences. And if I had just been this introspective, uh, you know, sort of monk-like person who just lived my whole life like that, yeah. I wouldn't have had any of that in my path. And that's the thing. I think we need to realize that as we go through life, we're, we're, we have contrasts thrown at us. We have different situations thrown at us that we have to go through to help us to awaken spiritually. And, you know, this, this can include all sorts of things, dark nights of the soul and, and you name it, to be able to move to, to be able to move to that place. So you, you do the tire mindset, the tire practice. Can you go into that for us for a little bit? Sure. Well, one of the things that I, I took note when I started channeling and, and really accepted I was a channel and I got my channeling to a point where it wasn't just this knowing that dropped in. Mm. I taught myself to have more of a conversation experience. This was okay. in my forties. And then I started teaching myself to write, which was relatively easy and mm -hmm. teaching myself to speak, which was not relatively easy. It was difficult, but ultimately I taught myself to do all of those things. I developed skills as a human being to allow this knowing to, to be something that's useful beyond just me. Yeah. So one of the first questions I asked was, well, why do we need another channel? Abraham is fantastic. I love Abraham. People seem to love Abraham. I love Abraham too. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I still love Abraham, even though I haven't listened to Esther in quite some time. I, I uh, still, I acknowledged in my first book that she's the reason that I channel. Finding her made it, it wasn't weird to me anymore. It was just like, oh, this is cool. I like this. Yeah. Why did I, th why I did I judge it? Yeah. Why did I think it was so weird? Yeah. So she she is the reason for that. And it's interesting. We have a mutual friend here in Palm Springs. So I have not met her, but I, I know somebody that knows her well and has known her for many, many years. So it's kind of cool that we have that mutual friend. Yeah. So there's far more the, channels in the world than people even realize now, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, I think everyone has source in them and has their own unique way of expressing source mm. now as far as tapping in and writing and speaking and doing all of that i think that that's a unique ability just like singing and you know everything yeah. else but it, it's taken me some time to really come around to fully understanding all of that but taya the reason i created taya is because i did notice that in abraham's message that people loved being in the presence of it 
but applying it seemed to be a lot of trouble for people. Yeah. Like people would get into the hot seat. I've been listening to you for years and I still can't figure out X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, gosh, I've actually created tools. I'm a real problem solver kind of person. Yeah. Like if you give me something that I, that, that has to be solved, I will, I will not stop until it's solved. So I wanted to solve that issue for myself of, okay, I have all this knowing. I understand how the universe works. I understand the purpose of my ego. I understand how to manifest anything, really. Yeah. And so I have all of this understanding, but then how do I take it back into my human self and apply it and, and transform my life? And I did that. I transformed every area of my life throughout my 40s that any anybody... Uh, would I, any question I've ever had about life transformation, I've already done it, whether it's wow. stuck or not, that's a yeah. whole different story, but I've done <laughs> it. I've done the, you know, getting into fantastic shape, healing myself, money experiences, finding the love of my life, all of those things that we all want. I can say I've checked off every single one of those boxes now. So having done all of that is sort of like, okay, I did the 3d game. Now let's move to five. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, it. But for what I want to do for other people, if they're aligned with it, is I wanted to create this set of tools that I had created for myself and really package it for other people and, and say, this is, this is how you, you do this. Well, I started out teaching a course uh, online after I did my podcast, I published my book, I decided to quit my corporate job. And when I did, uh, I uh, was introduced to someone that teaches you how to do these online courses. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I didn't want any part of it. But once I realized that, well, wait a minute. This is a way to accomplish this. I can yep. teach what they teach me in a course. So I started this course called Abundance Breakthroughs. And I had a, a, a good following on my podcast. And suddenly I had all these people lined up to take this course. It was incredible. So they started, they took the course and the entire course was channeled by the stream. Okay. And it's not, the cool thing about the person that taught me how to do it, she did not teach me how to teach a course. She just taught me how to put it all together market it, put it out there, that sort of thing. And I liked that about it because I just channeled the whole thing. Well, that created the set of modules that our students take online. And then I was the one originally coaching it. So these people transform their lives. Yeah. They change. I had people get out of abusive relationships. I had people manifest money. I had people manifest uh, healing from terminal illness. Just incredible. Yeah. The first, first year was just like, oh my God, we've already have all these amazing stories. So I, I was realizing that it really, really worked. Well, the issue became while you're in the, the course, you have this massive explosion in manifestation because you are working with your vibration every single day. Yeah. But then what happens when you get out of the course? Yeah. And so that's why we trans transitioned from just a course to a full-blown mindset practice that becomes a lifestyle. Uh, it's uh, it's it's like a religion, but it doesn't have any rules or worship or anything like that, that you practice it. It's a mindset practice that you practice every day for the rest of your life. And you get better and better and better at it, the more you practice as you do. And your life just continues to go through this blossoming mm -hmm. process. And now yeah. I have people that have been in it for like three or four years, full-blown mm -hmm. awakening, full-blown uh, no longer caring about any of the stuff. Yeah, the the three D stuff. Yeah, yeah. the three D stuff. And, and and I I was a three D person, like I said, for the first two decades of my adult life. Three really, because I started manifesting materially in high school. Yeah, because I was one of the poor kids, but I looked like one of the rich kids. I had a brand new car and nice clothes and a fancy watch and all that stuff because I manifested in high school. So the manifesting of stuff, you know, when you're a poor kid. That looks like happiness because so the kids going off to summer camp and Disney, they were all happy. I wasn't happy. I wasn't doing any of that. Yeah. So the material stuff seems like happiness in our world. That's what the matrix teaches us that expansion is consumerism. Yeah, exactly. And even in spiritual circles, it's very often, you know, abundance focused and a lot of that uh, that's consumerism is the base of that. Yeah. And it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Even Taya, Taya stands for trust your abundance. Yeah, but I always knew that abundance can mean anything. Mm -hmm. It's not and, just materialism, and can be, right? And so now abundance is, just means so much more than just that. It can mean that, but it mean it can mean so much more than that. And that's why we call it Taya.
Your your story is absolutely amazing. I love the tire program. Would it be possible to uh, to bring your teachers in right now and and let us? Yes. Chat with them? Yes. That would be. <laughs> it takes me just a moment yep. to uh, oh, to dial them up. Uh, what I always do is I invite everyone to just um, just be quiet and do a little breath work for just a moment, and then they arrive, and you will know when they're here. We are here. Hello. Hi, the stream. Welcome. We understand that you have questions for us. Well, um, we have talked to a number of um, ascended masters and teachers through uh, through human channels, and I'm curious. Um, what you speak to us through David, how is it different than any other human channel speaks or or what you teach and speak? Is it a further emphasis of a much needed uh, message of light, love, forgiveness and truth the world so needs to hear? The, the way that we flow through David is, is, is the information that he is tapping into. Uh, understand that any human being that that is is tapping into source and it, it is all source is tapping into something that is far greater th than the human mind can possibly comprehend. So it is being filtered through a human mind and a human belief system. So when you see variations of, of those who channel source, however they refer to that, you are going to, you, you are experiencing the variations of their filtration system. There's a little bit of belief that is present that is not quite ready to speak certain words and therefore will hold back. Or there is a, a religious belief that aligns with what they are receiving and therefore the messages that they were receiving to them are, are very much in alignment with the, the, their learned religious beliefs and that, that is what they're channeling. And it is, it is absolutely authentic. It is just a different variety. The, the unique thing in David's channeling of our message is that his intention is to release as much as of that filtration system as possible. So when you are speaking to what you refer to as the stream, we, we do not have names. That, that is a name given by David. We are not former humans or anything of that nature. When you speak to us, you are speaking to source and you are receiving with as little filtration as possible. The, the agreement that David made when we began flowing through him verbally, especially, was to allow us to flow unfiltered, even if it gets him into trouble, mm -hmm. even if, if the, the listener is not necessarily agreeing with it. And he always has the ability to, 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 to pump the brakes anytime he wants. He has not yet chosen to do that, however. There, there is always a selection of words and a, and a building of the, the narrative that allows him to share things that might seem very distasteful to mainstream humanity, but in a way where they, they are brought around to understanding what the core of the message is. Awesome. awesome. Hey there. I really hope that you're enjoying this episode and I ask that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes that I publish from any of my different segments. So let me interrupt the show just for a moment to let you know about something amazing that I have to offer you. Firstly, if you haven't yet signed up for my free Superconscious Success Inner Circle, then definitely go ahead and do that now. However, that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Today, I want to share with you about my brand new website called Universal Consciousness Workshops that hosts some incredible intensives all throughout the year. We have intensives for our nine anchor transformational process, our self-empowered empath process, our 12 steps to ascension process, and many more. 
These three-day online intensives are incredible and will provide you with insight that will allow you to grow and evolve as the individual you are designed to be. To discover what intensives are available right now, head across to universalconsciousnessworkshops.com slash intensives and learn more. However, if you are wanting to receive 25% off both the standard and the VIP tickets for any of the intensives, then all you need to do is become a member of that superconscious success inner circle, which is absolutely free until I reach 1,000 members, at which time it will start to become premium. Get in now and you'll lock it in free for a lifetime. To sign up, just go to superconscioussuccess.com slash inner circle. Okay, thanks so much for listening. Now let's head back to this episode. So, so the world is, is, is full of a lot of, of controversy at the moment and a lot of fear that is surrounding people at the moment. How may, how may people um, eliminate that fear so that they may be able to reach their higher levels of consciousness? The, the, the concept of fear was something that was a component of humanity's ego that was much like the animals in your world, the, 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 the immediate removal from a situation that could cause harm. Yeah. So, so you have this very powerful emotion that is a fear trigger that serves you. However, humanity and in, in, in its creation of a belief system, a matrix, if you will, to operate on, and, and, and all beings operate in a matrix. Mm -hmm. And humanity is a bit different in your world because as a mutation of your environment, you have progressed beyond simple evolution and reaction to what's going on in the moment. You think forward, you create mm -hmm. in a different way than, than, than the animals and, the, and other beings in your world. And with this ability to, to imagine things into being that are far beyond the reality that you're experiencing in your moment, your leaders of your world, very all the way back to, to what a leader was a leader of a handful of, of, of people in the wilderness mm -hmm. came to understand that fear was an instrument of control Yeah, mm -hmm. that teaching fear and having consequences that instilled fear gave them power. And of course that became a powerful component of humanity's matrix. So what's happening to humanity at this time in your world is that fear has been used and of course, along with fear comes judgment and comparison and all of these other things has been used for quite some time and has brought humanity along a journey of, of evolution of thought and creation of technology to where you're now able to create technology that is so close to the technology that creates you. Yeah. Mm. That's that's where you are as humanity. Of course, you're you're well aware that 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 fear and 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 what you may refer to as contrast has been present as as long as as physical has existed and and, and it is infinite. Yeah. So the the turning point where humanity finds itself at this time, and the reason we're flowing through David the way that we are at this time, is because you are catching up to the technology that creates you. And in your catching up to that technology, you are coming to understand that you are operating in a matrix and you're questioning the matrix. And as you're questioning the matrix, the matrix is starting to fracture a bit and starting to crumble a bit. But as it starts to fracture and crumble, it, it is a vibration, is a powerful vibration, and it wants to fight for life. Yeah. So when you collectively question your religions and your governments and your borders and your boundaries and your social constructs and all of these things that you're all questioning, you're even questioning your own genders now. Mm. So you're questioning all of these things. All of that matrix starts to dissolve, but it wants to come back. It's going to fight for life. It's going to come back around and attempt to instill more fear and deliver things to humanity that are going to put you back into your box. Okay. That is a battle that, that, that you are all fighting on different levels, but you're all on different journeys. So you can, you can place yourselves completely out of that matrix at any time and reside there if you so choose. So, what's, so, so when they're talking about the, the new earth and the new rise to 5D consciousness, um, what do they mean by that? The, the the these are all human created terms, of course. Mm -hmm. Yep. But 
new earth is going to be old earth. Yeah. There, there's not going to be a new planet and you're not racing towards some sort of utopian existence where you all just get along and live in harmony. The desire for that is a desire to return to your completed state, which is how you exist eternally when you're not manifested in physical. You want for nothing in that state. Yeah. There is harmony in that state. There, there, there is beauty in that state. There, there is wanting for nothing in that state. However, the expansion that is we, we will fall short of using the word required because that indicates desire and it's automatic yeah. you, you are expansive beings by nature you cannot not expand mm -hmm. but that expansion is achieved in your projecting into physical experiences and experiencing the contrast of a physical reality all physical realities are polarized all of them they're polarized by design so that you have these contrasting experiences. So your being projects then, and we will utilize planet Earth as, as an example, since you were human beings that we were communicating with at this time, you project into humanity that is a polarized environment. Your Earth is a polarized environment. And there are going to be things that you desire very much to experience in, in, as expressions of the, that which we are, we're source expression. You are going to want to experience these things. There are foods that you like and sounds that you like and smells that you like and, and, and beautiful things that you imagine that you see and experience that you very much want to experience while you're here. But moving toward those experiences, you are going to also move into your lower vibrational register because of polarity and you're going to manifest some unwanted things. Mm -hmm. the unwanted things exist to allow you the opportunity to create a solution mm -hmm. for the unwanted thing. Even if the solution is, is, is wrapping your head around how you created it and feeling just a little bit better about it, that's new creation. Mm -hmm. That new creation creates expansion. That is why you come to physical. But you operate in this matrix at this time, and you are well aware of this, that the matrix tells you that all of that contrast is bad. Mm -hmm. you should not suffer you should not experience pain that there are evil beings in the world that are seeking to inflict pain upon you that it's not your fault you're a victim and that it's something that you need to suffer in for a lifetime whereas we know that's not the case innately you know that that's not the case because you're you you are all dual beings mm. while you're in physical there is a soul version of you and there's an ego version of you mm -hmm. the soul version of you is always calling you forward Yes, there's more. Yes, there's beauty. Yes, there are things to enjoy. Yes, there is another day. Yes, you're an eternal being. Yes, you were here to experience the things that you love. Love yes, and light. Yes, you here to experience joy, love and light. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anything less than that is a product of ego. Yeah. There, there are no evil beings out there projecting in evil to your world. The evil is all inside work. So how may how may we connect with our high, higher self or our source or or um, whatever we want to call it as opposed to giving into that ego? We are always with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you all have your version of this. We are always with you. We are in all creation all the time. That that physical consciousness, that which you refer to perhaps as ego, that serves to separate you from yes. us. And in that separation, you have your human experience. Mm -hmm. You have your growth-oriented human experience of contrast. That's the source of all evil is ego. Yeah. And the source of all suffering is judgment of that ego-driven experience. So is this the matrix that you refer to? Can we equate that to being the ego? The, the matrix is the collective ego of all humanity, indeed. Yeah. And understand ego is duality as well. There, there are positive aspects of ego. We, we are not coming and saying, get rid of your ego. The way to get rid of your ego is, is to end your human experience yeah. and return to your completed state. Your ego can drive you and, 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 and agree with source. Yeah. If, in if, your worthiness. Yeah. If I think, I think more than, more than, you know, there are people out there that saying, you know, squash the ego, but the ego is, is necessary for our human experience. As you said, the only way we can we can get rid of the ego is to to pass across to non-physical. And so I think rather than that, it's to teach the ego and your higher self 
um, or you're super conscious to work alongside each other and, you know, and then source or, or your, your true self can really take the reins. Understand the, the value of the imperfect journey. We refer to the perfection of imperfection. Yeah. The, the imperfection of your journey is, is what your soul came here for. Yep. And you have this matrix that, that, that teaches that those that are born into abundance and those that are born into a life of ease are blessed and those who are born into poverty or genocide or illness are somehow cursed, the opposite is true. Mm -hmm. When a soul is seeking a great expansive experience, a soul is not going to project into the loving doting couple that are financially secure and prepared to, 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 to raise the perfect being mm -hmm. the, that soul is going to project right into war, right yeah. into poverty, right into starvation, right into being a, a, an oppressed race, if you will, right into some sort of, of, of situation that is going to offer a platform from which to expand. The yeah. expansion is the moving through the pain, the moving through the, 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 perceived suffering and and having an experience in that even if the experience of it is an early demise even if the experience of it is is becoming a drug addict and, and dying in a gutter somewhere in your in, in your 20s there is great expansion offered in those experiences but you're operating in this matrix that teaches you to judge these things yeah exactly well it isn't um the ultimate goal of all beings, no matter where they exist, you, me, Jen, uh, to leave behind the polarity and, and the matrix and move into a non-dualistic uh, home back at, with source. Isn't that the ultimate goal of enlightenment? You are already there. Mm -hmm. that, that enlightened being that you speak of, the, 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 there are few human words that describe what we are communicating through David. The, the the only movement, the only expansion is into the core of source. Mm -hmm. The core of source is 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 where we reside. And all souls, all being, all strands of consciousness, however you wish to 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 describe these things, are inevitably moving into the core and becoming the core and expanding the core of source. That expansion occurs by expressing in physical infinitely the, the the concept that a being or a soul is moving through human journeys or like human journeys and moving into the core and simply resting there is 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 inaccurate because there's no expansion in the resting in the core of source we are expressing expressing in all physical all mm -hmm. the time we are we are present in the suffering Mm. We are there. The ego is overshadowing us and creating the suffering. Yeah. But we are still present in the suffering. We, we are always a, a click away, always a click away for all beings. But you get yourself saying, when we say you, we are speaking to all of humanity. We are speaking to the matrix. Get yourself so wrapped up in the victimization and the suffering yep. and the, the wrongness of the experience, essentially the judgment of the experience mm. should not be. That creates the suffering. And, and and unraveling all of that judgment of the experience, it, it creates a massive awakening for any being. Yeah, I think judgment is a real is a real um, contributor to our ego conscious, uh, the collective ego, because because we're so wrapped up in in what's right and what's wrong and how things should be, and yet we don't understand that everybody has their own path and everybody has their own journey that they have to go through every soul has its own experience that it needs to be experiencing and so what we see as right or wrong is neither right nor wrong it's just that individual soul going through its human experience indeed everything if, if you begin to look at everything as just an experience yeah just an experience yeah. and, and it is it is incredible to all of you when you begin to learn these things how easy it is to simply reimagine and reshape something, perhaps something that has caused you pain your entire life and completely release that pain just in that higher consciousness realization that it was nothing more than an experience that you moved through. When you yeah. remove the fear and judgment from it, suddenly it's just that. Yeah. 
And it was there, it was there to allow our soul to grow and to expand. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose of that experience. And if you, you look- You, you suffer you, until you choose to not suffer anymore, but yep. you look back and realize that all of the suffering created this suffering journey that actually catapulted you higher and higher and higher. Absolutely. I was just going to say, awesome. What were you going to say, Carl? Well, you know, in this world uh, filled with drama and trauma and, and attack and lack, um, to me, forgiveness is one of the key the key things in order to leave that stuff behind. What is your thoughts on forgiveness? How how can uh, a human being reach true forgiveness? In the the Taya practice that we have delivered, there are four pillars, and and the first pillar for a very long time was called forgiveness, and and David's teaching it to people all over the world realized that he needed to blow past forgiveness into full-blown appreciation yeah the, the full-blown appreciation of the transgressor is the full-blown release of the transgressor if you think about and, and and of course these are all human created words that hold the meaning that you truly give to them but the the concept of forgiveness to 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 put that vibration into words <clears throat> is you did something wrong to me yep. <clears throat> and i'm going to choose to let you off the hook and move on yeah. The concept of appreciation is we co-created something together that I was a participant in, even if I don't know exactly how, and you helped me get to where I wanted to go yeah. vibrationally. You helped me have that experience. Even if it was painful in the moment, it was an experience that my soul came here to have. And I now have full-blown authentic appreciation for that. And you are now released as a transgressor. And that's, and that's something that I've really started to implement myself because, you know, I've been through a number of things as well where, you know, you could probably say, oh, forgiveness is, is what you need to do. But I've learned to appreciate um, the experience that has been in front of me as, as hard as it is. You go, thank you for actually allowing me to expand and to grow because without it, without going through that, then I wouldn't be at the place that I'm at right now. So I, I totally 100% um, agree that appreciation is is where more people need to be going towards. It's hard though, because when you're in that situation, you, you're like, how can I appreciate this happening until you've gotten to the place that you recognize that it's just lessons to be learned and it's an experience to be had. Indeed. Mm -hmm. What are you going to yeah. say, Carl? Well, and in the moment when, you know, let's say, I mean, what you described, uh, David, in the stream is, is beautiful, but in the moment, so, well, I really appreciate that I just got shot. I just really appreciate that I got raped. But yeah, but as you said, Jennifer really is, is it's almost that old scenario, what you perceived as the worst thing possible. Years down the line, you realize could have been the greatest, the best thing that ever happened. Well, and the journey, the journey of work that you do to release these things, mm. it's, it's not an instantaneous. You don't sit down yeah. in an afternoon and decide that you're going to appreciate being raped. No, <laughs> right. You don't do that. You, you you start a process of moving toward forgiveness and moving toward understanding. And understand when, when we say when when we say appreciation, we are not talking about celebration necessarily. Yeah. We are talking about such deep understanding of that you can no longer judge it. Yes. And that is work. And it may be a lifetime of work, but every little incremental session that that you choose to sit and reimagine something that is a transgressor for you you are raising your vibration systematically in doing that. You, you, you all operate in a default vibration. This is why you, you try to implement new things in your lives and you, you get sort of pulled back into a reality that is the same reoccurring reality until you actually heal the root cause of whatever's holding you there. Mm -hmm. the, those things, we refer to that as your vibrational basement. Those things are always lurking in your vibrational basement until you release those transgressors. They're there. You can do a little bit of work and feel a little bit better because you're operating in polarity. Polarity pulls your vibration up just like it pulls it down naturally. So you will have an experience that will drag you down and for no specific reason, feel better about it in a day or two. Yeah. Because you're in this polarized environment. You can also wake up one morning for no specific reason and feel terrible about your, your future in the world and, and not even need to turn on the news to, to be frightened of what's going to happen next. So you're all in moving through this vibrational flow that polarity creates. 
that creates your contrasting experience. That ensures that you're just not going to have that high utopian, David often refers to it as bypassing experience where you're just pretending to be in bliss all the time, yet ignoring all of that stuff in your basement. That's inevitably going to send you plunging down your vibrational spiral at some point, but you don't have to do that. You yeah. can make, you can begin working on all of the stuff that's down there. And this is a, this is a, a teaching that most of humanity does not yet understand that we are going to share with you. The reason that things do not get solved is because when something bad happens, when someone is shot or, or raped, as you have said, they are already moving through a natural period of lower vibrational flow when that sort of thing occurs. Mm. And there is momentum building toward that, that, that creates that situation. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for many people to comprehend that because they want to stay in that space of, I didn't create this. This wasn't my fault. This was an evil person that just did something bad to me and it just happened. But nothing just happens ever. There, there is nothing that just happens. But give yourself a break on trying to understand how you could have possibly attracted something so violent, especially, or so painful, especially. Mm. Don't dive into that right away because if you're in that lower vibrational field, you are not capable of new thought. You're not yeah. capable of creativity. You're recycling down there. So when you find something has triggered you or something bad has happened, don't try to solve it from the lower vibrational space. Yeah. This is why we guide you to move toward blind appreciation of it, understanding that softening the vibration will start you in an upward trajectory and you will soon find, your, find yourself in a higher vibrational space. What humanity teaches, what your matrix teaches, though, is when you get to that higher vibrational space, don't look back. Don't think about it. You don't want to go back there. You don't want to experience that pain again. The issue there is that that thing is still there. It is yeah. still present. It's going to come back around Until you've again. dealt with it. Mm. When you go to the higher vibrational space, you now have the tools to solve it. Yeah. You didn't have the tools down here. You have the tools up here. So when you have that painful thing, find blind appreciation for it first. Even if the appreciation is just that, I know that I'm going to feel better tomorrow. I know that I'm going to heal this. This too shall pass. Something of that nature. Yeah. Whatever you can muster that's authentic, that's going to move you up, you move yourself up. Then you look back instead of looking forward and only wanting to stay up. You fearlessly look back because you're now in high vibration. Yeah. You can now see it very differently. You can now find appreciation for that transgressor. And in doing that work over and over again, you ultimately release the transgressor. We, we have flowed through David and he has worked with people that have said the thing that I started out demonizing I now see was one of the greatest yep. experiences of my life. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the, the great thing is that once we can move to those higher vibrations, that's when we can really hear consciousness. That's when we can really hear our higher self. And so, as you said, David, then we've got the tools to be able to, um, to be able to deal with whatever the issue is, to be able to deal with trauma or whatever else we've been going through. We can't do it from, from the the guilt or from the resentment or any of the other lower vibrations that we often go through after we've been you know gone through an experience so i think that's great tip for for people out there that are maybe going through something at the moment is is it possible for to uh, move completely out of the matrix and the, pol the world with polarity and still remain in, in a human body? Or do you have to leave your body in, in order to reach that point? To, to remove yourself from polarity, you would, you would not be experiencing physical. Yeah. Physical is not polarized. physical. Okay. Polarity creates physical. So you are always going to be in polarity and, and, and seeking this perfection a lot of, of, of human beings along their spiritual journey are still seeking perfection, this utopian environment. And where we are guiding all of you is to understand that you're already in perfection. You're already in yeah. the utopian environment. It's, it's reimagining how you view your experience and humanity's experience. A, a huge component of this for many, because you have this benevolent aspect of your personality which is actually more rooted in your ego than your your soul consciousness 
that you want the best for other beings. Yeah. That you want to see other suffering stop. You don't want to see anyone else suffering. There's nothing bad or wrong about any of this. We we are not here to demonize any any part of your human journey. But it's journey. part of their journey. It's part of their journey. And if you start appreciating that it's part of their journey, again, you're operating in a matrix that tells you that that is wrong and is callous and it's uncaring and how awful of you. But notice that all of these things that you continually demonize don't get solved. They yeah. stick around, they keep coming around. As long as you've had recorded history, there have been there has been murder, there has been rape, there has been all sorts of things that 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 create suffering in your world, and the demonization of it doesn't stop a thing. No. The appreciation of it and the deep understanding of it would actually solve it, but collectively, you you are not in danger of heading there because your your earth environment is not in danger of disappearing. Mm-hmm. It's going to continue. It's going to move forward because of all of the contrast. Because you you are all here on different journeys. There are are plenty of of human beings that are nowhere near the at the place to hear our message at this time. Yes. Yeah. That's... Plenty. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so when we first when we first come into our human body as a soul, um, we hear a lot about the soul contracts. And we hear a lot about what our soul's journey was going to be throughout this lifetime. And we often, within that, we come into this into this lifetime with different people and um, different experiences. And the people that come into our in into this lifetime are here to help us along on our journey, right? You you are 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 independent strands of consciousness, but you're not really independent. Yeah, you are all expressions of source. Yeah, we we have used the analogy of, of, of taking a rope mm-hmm. and slicing it, and looking at that rope and understanding that that rope is made up of all of these little tiny strands. filaments that are yeah. twisted together, and those strands are twisted together to make other strands on out to the full rope. Th- that is the closest thing in physical that allows us to describe what how non physical energy operates. You are strands of consciousness. You are tightly bound with vibrational neighbors Mm -hmm. that you have infinite experiences with, and you absolutely co-create all of your human journey. You you perceive yourselves as independent, but when you're not in physical, you do not perceive yourselves that way at all. In fact, when you get out of your ego a bit, you understand that you are indeed a collective consciousness, that humanity is a collective, that all of the the mammals of your world are a collective, all of the beings of your world collective your world is a collective on out into infinity from there yeah so what happens during this time of like astral astral travel when people actually move outside of their body is that kind of like where they're they're moving between places when when you you, the non-physical aspect of you is is omnipresent and omniscient Mm -hmm. everywhere all the time the energetic realm is everywhere it's it is not that there is an ebb and flow of energy and there is a vibration to energy, certainly. And, and, and there are places that are, are have a, a more powerful energy flow and some have weaker. That's what yeah. energy is. So in the energetic realm, you are everywhere all the time. Yep. The physical realm, you, you are perceiving yourselves as an individual having a singular experience. The soul that is you is having infinite experiences mm-hmm. all the time not even in a timeline, infinite experiences that are not linear, but you are here perceiving a linear experience to give you just that, to give you the experience. As far as soul contracts go, the the, the soul is seeking to come in and have an experience of chance. Mm -hmm. The experience of chance, the, the, the only contract really is to deliver expansion. Yeah. To expand experience the expansion of the human journey or a, a physical journey the experience of chance that's where your ego comes in because how your ego chooses to respond to whatever you are manifesting around you you are always choosing what's next what's next what's next we're going to go over here we're going to go there we're going to build this wall of never again we're going to create this abundance block over here we're going to believe that we're very abundant over there and we're going to create this tapestry that is our own matrix that is our own unique life experience and we created it so therefore we can ultimately change it anytime that we want but understand that when you are moving through the human journey the reason that you have this this repetitive 
uh, ego focus is so that you can have an experience that gives you that linear time aspect so that you can work on certain things and expand in the work. So that expansion is achieved by new creation. Yeah. So when your soul comes in and has that new reaction to, to something that you've created, that is new creation that did not exist before. That is the closest thing to linear time in the energetic realm. But it's, 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 it's essentially an experience overriding itself into a more sophisticated version of itself. So the expansion is expansion of sophistication, expansion, uh, expansion of intelligence, if you will. That's what is being achieved in physical environments. And that expands the entire universe. And so this well, is how we can move between the different realities and we can choose what our own reality is if we allow our ego to step you, aside. You are expressing in, in, in infinite realities already mm, and, and yeah. you can shift your consciousness. There is great value, however, in holding your consciousness in the human journey most of the time yeah. because you are all well aware that in your matrix that those that spin out so far that they're no longer in one singular journey are labeled insane and are not very able to function in your world. That is an experience mm -hmm. in and of itself. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But understand that, that you all have enough fear going on that you want to keep yourself sane so that you have a known journey. Yeah. Great. Great well, said. I'd just like to remind people that we are speaking with a collective of teachers called The Stream coming through our friend David Strickle. Uh, for all our viewers uh, who uh, and listeners who are tuning in. But I like uh, um, that you have made a point to let us know that you're not a deity and that you don't want to be worshipped. You're just here to help us. The concept of deities and gods and worship and all of that, the, the, those are human created concepts. Yeah. There, there is nothing of the energetic realm that is seeking obedience or worship from humanity. There, there is none of that. And, and, and ju just to put it in very simple terms, why would a, a powerful being that is the creator of all that is need to be worshiped or even obeyed? Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. no reason. Well, this there, is there is awesome. zero desire. There is zero desire for that. Yeah. Fantastic. That is human creation. We this has it. been awesome. Thank you so much. The stream. Is... Nice love. That is what we have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you oh, Thank you, David. He's back. <laughs> David. Welcome that was back. a long channel, but that was great. Ah, oh, I've gone for two hours. Yeah, I bet you could go. <laughs> I'm on exhausted and on at the on. end of the day when I do two hours, but yeah, I think I did four. I did four hours live in LA in January, and after oh. that, I was like, okay, I can't do four hours again. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that is wiped crazy. out for two days after that. Before you leave us, why don't you tell us about your new book, the uh, that you and the stream wrote, the stream, Eternal Wisdom for a Better Life. Well, I that's not our new book. That's our old book. That was, was published actually, in 2018. That's the only book I have on the market at the moment. Uh, I was actually so, going to say just to, just before you said that that I went through and I read that, um, or at least I'm halfway through reading it. Um, but what I really loved is they told the stories um your stories and then the stream actually came in and explained exactly what was um exactly what was going on and i love the way that it was written so you and the stream did an awesome job thank you thank you yeah. i uh we have we do have a new book coming out it's probably gonna come out next year and it's the Taya practice book nice. uh, it's five years of us teaching this practice now to people all over the world and we've really fleshed out how to teach it uh, you're speaking to all learning styles and people from all works, walks of life. We've had people come through boot camp in their 20s all the way to their 70s uh, on uh, seven continents. Mm -hmm. So we've taught it to a lot of people and we've seen a lot of people overcome a lot of things and we've seen people move into a full-blown awakening experience with it. Oh, that's and, amazing. And what's your website and how can people connect with you? Uh, we're the stream of David everywhere. The podcast is the stream of David. The website is stream of David uh, We took a break from social media over the summer, but we'll get back into the social media now that fall's coming. Uh, I just needed a break from social yeah. media. And all I don't that blame stuff you. All the time. <laughs> so blame yeah, so we what we did is we started a Patreon for people that support the podcast. Okay, and I awesome. have everything sort of uh, set up linearly in, in Patreon now, which I love. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, have all of that that you can do. But um, yeah, the streamofdavid.com, the podcast is a great place to start uh, learning the teachings. 
Uh, we're about to take the podcast live. We're going to start doing a live podcast wow. every week awesome. uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah. So I'm really excited to do that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, David. We got some excellent information from both you and the stream today um, to really help our listeners to understand a lot of the concepts of what's going on and how they may be able to also tap into uh, their consciousness. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. It was great fun being here. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Carl.